So a couple weeks ago, I went to visit my friend Leslie in her lab to talk about my favorite model organism, fruit flies, as well as her research involving stem cells and guts and developmental biology and poop. We also talked about poop. It was great. Let's go. Come follow me. So we keep flies in incubators. So this is an example of an incubator. Um, and these are bottles. So we keep flies either in vials or in bottles and the bottles just let a lot more flies grow. Um, one of the first questions I get asked whenever someone who isn't a fly biologist comes into the lab is how do you work with flies? Um, and so the way we work with flies is we use CO2 and so this is a basically it's a um, this is a CO2 gun that we use to shoot basically CO2 into the bottle and what it does is it knocks the flies out and keeps them from moving so that we can work with them easier and then once we take them off the CO2 they'll wake up again. So this is so this is a fly pad so this also um, emits CO2 so that the flies will stay knocked out even when they're on the pad. And then we just use a paintbrush to move them around so we can see what's happening. So what we're looking at now is fruit flies. So these are the adult fruit flies. So first of all, we can start off by showing the different genders. So the males are generally, but not always, smaller. You can often tell by a lot of times the males have like a darker patch here. Um, whereas the females tend to be a little bit lighter, but not always. Fruit flies start out their life as eggs, and when those eggs hatch, they hatch as larvae, and they crawl around in this food down here, and basically all they do is eat and poop and grow. Great. And then once they reach a certain size, they start crawling up the side of the vial, and they eventually will form a pupil case and undergo metamorphosis like caterpillars to butterflies, where essentially the vast majority of the larva will actually dissolve and those cells will eventually rearrange to become an adult fruit fly, like this guy right here. I think what's really fascinating about it is that um, you have this basically, this tube that all it does is eats and um, somehow in a lot of those cells is some sort of information that will tell basically this mismatch of cells, how to become an adult fly, which is um, externally a far more complicated organism than the larva. And so how that all happens is still a lot of, a bit of a black box and understanding how those cells um, rearrange, which cells die, which cells divide, and things like that is something that I think a lot of people are really interested in. I think is a really cool area of study and is very developmental biology. Yes. <laughs> developmental biology goes beyond just individual cells and looks at how cells as a community sort of work together to build a working, functioning animal or organism. Yeah. So I study the intestine of fruit flies, and for the gut, what this means is that the larva, because basically it's just an eating machine, has a gut. Um, but once it enters the pupil case, a new gut will actually start to form and the old gut, the cells will die off and compact um, and basically the first poop that the adult fly makes is its old gut. No way. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, that's both gross and amazing. What's really cool is you can actually see that. And so you can see that here. So this is a really young female fly and um, this sort of grayish greenish spot right here is actually that is the gut that she is going to poop out and the fun fact that i love to share about guts in general is that um, by this time next week our human guts so your gut my gut everyone's gut will be lined almost entirely with brand new cells and so i think most people um, are come with the assumption that we are born with the cells that, the cells that we have today are the cells that we were born with, but that's actually not true. The vast majority of the cells in your body um, undergo what we call turnover, where cells are regularly lost and replaced through just normal, healthy growth and processes. What we're really interested in is how do, um, what determines those turnover rates, but also, um, Turnover happens because cells die and in most tissues stem cells recognize that cells are gone and will divide to replace those cells. And so how do stem cells know that other cells in the tissue are gone? 
Um, but also, um, stem cells also have to be able to tell which types of cells died. So most of our tissues have a bunch of different types of cells and the stem cells have to be able to know which cells to replace. And so how does it make that decision of, I have to divide to replace this cell, but also that cell, what kind of cell should I be replacing? On the outside, flies are very, very different from humans, um, but in a lot of ways, a lot of things that happen in flies um, actually are very similar to things that happen in humans or higher level organisms. We share a lot of really important genes and actually a lot of factors that have been discovered in flies have actually been shown to also be important in humans and mammals. Um, and they're also really small, they're easy to grow, um, they reproduce really quickly and so you can do experiments a lot faster and get a better understanding of how systems work um, on a much shorter time scale than you would if you were working like say with mice. I think the biggest reason that I love science is that I love science and I love being a scientist is that I love being at the forefront of knowledge and I love being sort of at that cliff's edge of we don't know what's out there, we don't know. Getting to answer questions that no one has asked before or see things that no one has seen before I think is really exciting. Being able to basically come to work every day and basically be that annoying kid that asks like, well, why does that happen? Why does this happen? Well, why does that happen? Like I think is, is, is really fun and is really exciting. So most of uh, the work that I do with flies involves um, looking through a microscope and looking through really powerful, really expensive microscopes um, to, and being able to see like in a certain sense, this whole new world that most people don't get to see. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of like my outer space or my like you know 20,000 feet under the ocean or whatever. It's um, it's this whole other universe where the rules are just very different and um, and it's very it's very beautiful. I was always really attracted to biology because I've always been a very artsy and very visual person. And microscopy and being able to look in microscopes in particular is just visually stunning and um, it's really exciting to be able to come to work and be able to generate beautiful, meaningful pictures um, about science and try to understand how the world works. Huge, huge thank you to Leslie for letting me follow her around her lab and also for putting up with texts where I was like, hi, I need more maggots. Can I come film maggots? It was great. It was very awesome. Huge thanks to her and also to all of you for watching and sharing. You can click over there to subscribe if you want to see more videos or also down there to watch more like this. Go forth and do science.